Hi, my name's Al Roth. I teach mathematics, and I'd like to talk about building rapport. Building rapport with your student is essential if you're going to be able to communicate. It's been shown in various studies that uh, communication occurs best when there is uh, when the other person when the, when it's not adversarial. Let's say, and it, in that light, well or at least as far as that's concerned, how do you create some sort of rapport? Well, everybody has their own style. Uh, for the most part, I got mine, and, and if I were to try to give you every detail of how I do it, it may not even make sense to you. All I can say, I just have a few points to, I guess I can make about this, is one, uh, listen. The, the, the best thing to do when you're, when you're uh, trying to uh, deal with anyone, a student or anyone in your life, is just listen. And not just passively listen. Uh, l listen for what it is the person needs and, and try to see through a lot of the emotional content. Frequently when a student talks to me, I, I, I can sense they're anxious. We all sense that. Uh, but in particular, when they're anxious, frequently they don't communicate clearly. So it's up to you to, to, to sit back and in a very, uh, as relaxed as you can be at the moment, uh, listen and try to find out what it is they need to, they need, or what it is they want, and, and how you might uh, deal with those things. Um, I mean, initially, just be congenial, be relaxed. If you're talking to them, maybe maybe try to avoid, you know, clenching and stuff like that. I know when somebody is being very anxious and, and, and even angry towards me, how easy it is for me to clench up and start. <laughs> so I have to sit back and I have to take a breath. And then I have to just listen carefully. And then, and then if the, if I feel uh, the situation is escalating. Uh, one of the things I like to do is to move them into the office, if it's possible, move them out of the way of the other students so as to not disturb the other students. And also, if you can get them into, into your office and you can close the door, well, in, in, in a place that's, you know, uh, accessible, if you can do that, frequently they will open up. Frequently, they will explain what, what, why they're angry or what's going on, and then you have a much, uh, it's much more easy to uh, remedy the situation, to, to address the situation. Two, mirror behavior is a way uh, that a lot of us, well, or some of us, can relate to the other person. And uh, I, I tend to mirror the student's behavior. Uh, and and what, what I mean by that is, if they're jovial, I'll be jovial. If they're quiet and reserved, I'll be more quiet and reserved. And if, uh, if, if I'm having a hard time reading them, then mostly I just let myself be. And, and mostly I try very hard not to avoid laughing. Uh, laughter is good, even even in a, in a situation where sometimes you got to be careful not to laugh so you don't insult or hurt the other person. It, that's important too, but but allowing yourself to laugh just is a release. The other person frequently will sense that, and if if you can do that, you can you can frequently relate to the person on the level that they're that they're at. That's that's just the way I do it. Everybody's got their own manners and. You use them as, as they work. Three, uh, since I teach math, I deal with a lot of anxiety. Now, that's not to say that everyone else isn't dealing with anxiety, especially people in gateway classes. Uh, however, math tends to really strike fear into the hearts of everyone. And, and I have learned to accept that. And uh, mostly I try to ameliorate that by sh showing people that, in particular, the math that they're doing, whatever the topic is, whatever the particular concept they're studying, is really isn't so far uh, above them. It's not such a big stretch. And I do that relating it in day-to-day in -day occurrences. If they're, ta if they're interested in snowmobiles, I'll, in, I'll relate some sort of rate problem in, with snowmobiles. But in a simple fashion as to just initiate them. If I 
have uh, someone who's who who works with fabric. I will create a problem that relates with a square area and their fabric, and and perhaps I might even make a comment on the texture of the fabric and how smoothly it rolls out, and just relating to their. Uh, their understandings. Once you do that uh, and they see that your understanding of what they do isn't, uh, isn't far removed from their conceptions, then they're more likely to relate to the, the mathematics or whatever subject you're teaching in a fashion that, that says, okay, all, I'm going to just look at what he's saying and not try to read into it too much. Just try to understand just the basic concept. And to me, that has worked wonders.